I drove to Alaska again. This was my first time making the drive midsummer. Overwhelming, long, and kind of magical. But first, When I was a kid, we were camping with my mom's side of the family, the Carols, and one day my Auntie Anna came out of her tent with no shirt on, and she had duct taped a star and a heart over her two nipples, and she was wearing like a triangle bandana on her head (laughs) with her hair pulled back and jeans. And she walked past two other campsites full of people to go to the restrooms with her boobs swinging. What do you think? And as a kid, that was like the most crazy thing that I had ever seen someone do. Two weeks ago, my aunt died and I flew home. And I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. After my aunt's funeral, I took my car out of storage and started the 2600 mile drive to Southeast Alaska. I'm not sure if this is my fourth or fifth time doing the drive. Either way, I love the journey. Usually I cross the border at Osseus, British Columbia, but this time I drove through Montana and the Canadian Rockies. So he just asked the basic questions, like, you know, if I had any firearms, weapons, any of those things, I do not have them. Um, I have had my vehicle checked, like a brief, you know, look around, but he didn't do that. The drive to and from Alaska is cathartic. The distance is great enough to give me time and space to remember each time I've gone on this journey before. Well folks, I'm in bear country. This here is bear territory. I drove from Utah to Alaska in 2021. It was only two years ago, but I feel so much older now. Looking back at this footage feels pretty vulnerable. So much was about to change, and so much had already changed. I drove north in May 2021 as one person. When I returned south in September, I wasn't the same. Happy fall, y'all. And that's probably going to happen again. It has every single time I've driven this highway. I've done the drive several times now, which is so cool because I think for so many people, this is like a once in a lifetime bucket list thing. And I've done it so many times. This is my first time doing it mid-summer though. Everything was green and alive. The wildflowers were in full bloom and the mountains were as beautiful as I've ever seen them. Oh my gosh, those were the sweetest little strawberries. I could not believe I found them. They were like smaller than my little pinky tip. 
and some little kids came up and I showed them where the strawberries were and so we all got to pick some. Driving this stretch of road during summer felt special. I've only ever been here during the fall. I say it all the time, but Canada is so underrated. Hi Justin Trudeau, I just wanted to ask if I could possibly like get a green card for Canada. Um, I'm an upstanding citizen and I would pay your taxes. My favorite part of the journey was a side trip to Stewart, Hyder, and the Salmon Glacier. It's been seven years since I'd been out here, and it became its own sort of side quest. I wasn't sure if I was going to stay the night at the Salmon Glacier. I wanted to, but I was having anxiety about the daily mileage I had to cover just to get back to work on time. At the lookout, there were trash bins covered with self-promotional stickers. I felt kind of judgmental as I wondered who the intended audience of these stickers were. If they were self-promotional, surely every other van lifer and moto rider was already here. Or had already been here. While I took photos of the stickers and contemplated whether or not I should stay the night, someone pulled up on a motorcycle. This is where your sticker goes, I said, when they saw me staring at the trash bins a little bit too long. The rider took off her helmet, and I was surprised to see someone I know. Someone from YouTube. I found Kinga of On Her Bike several years ago. I was motorbiking through Vietnam and met an Italian who was motorcycling around the world. I can't remember if he introduced me to Kinga or to the concept of motorcycling around the world. But either way, I found her. And this badass Polish Aussie woman was standing in front of me, and there was no way I wasn't going to stay that night. A group of six of us, a couple from the Netherlands, three Americans, and a Polish Aussie, spent the night sitting around a concrete table, sharing potato chips, gummies, vodka, and Trader Joe's peanut butter cups. We covered religion, travel, politics, nuclear reactors, visas, insurance, and Siberia. We scattered among three vehicles in a tent that night. The glacier was alive and breathing. And the whole encounter reminded me of why I love to travel and how that is an essential part of me. It's all over the world, right? Yep. And my followers will like go, I don't know, this thing must be somewhere close to somewhere. And you'll see it. And they send you into my yeah. house. I'm like, where is it?
Oh my god, they're so sweet. It's uh it's sweet pea. It's wild sweet pea. Howdy! Today is my last day on the road. I am I think less than five hours from Haynes. I just left Whitehorse. Honestly, I'm pretty bummed. I'm pretty sad to be leaving the interior in the Yukon and it's also been kind of sad and disheartening to me because even two years ago when I drove up to Alaska, I barely had cell reception most of the way and this time I was 40 minutes outside of Whitehorse and I had full bars and I get that like people in these rural areas need access to internet service and cell phone service so I'm not trying to poop on that but I am allowed to be sad because you know when I used to drive through this section I would go about four to five days without service and I first started driving up here in 2016 and now I have service almost every day um, not most of the day and like yesterday was my longest stretch without service but yeah that's the world now I guess this was my favorite part of the drive the road from Haynes Junction to Haynes I'd never driven it before. I was afraid that once I left Whitehorse, my body would take over and I would continue north into the interior of Alaska and to Denali. That's where I wanted to go, and it's where I've driven every other time I've driven through Canada. But this was beautiful. I made it! I wanted my drive to Alaska to be rejuvenating and nourishing. Honestly, it wasn't. I felt pressed for time and bummed out that I didn't have the capacity to film more. It's all been a lot, but I'm back in Alaska. I'm okay. And I'm grateful that I got to go back to the lower 48. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, 